Hey people, welcome to Squirrel Radio. A little more sophisticated this time, um, recording this in GarageBand, where they actually have a podcast setting, which I wish I'd known about for a while, and I can even tell it that I'm I'm a female, and I don't I don't know what it does about that, but you know, makes me sound prettier, sexier, probably not. Um, I will be quite honest, not feeling the best. Um, I got dumped <laughs> last Thursday. Um, and before you do the typical what a dick thing, seriously, everybody on this earth could be a little better off if you realize that breakups, assigning blame, pointless. Absolutely fucking pointless. Relationships don't work out because they just don't work out. It's not one person's fault. Even if someone cheats, it's like, why did they cheat? You know, it's... Let's not pretend everything is so fucking black and white. There is no such thing as blame. I had needs. He had needs. Uh, Everything was phenomenal. But, and we loved each other. Um, but in the end, we couldn't give each other what we needed. And, uh, yeah, didn't work out. But I am a little bit sad, sad pants. Um, it's to be expected. And what I wanted to talk to you today, it's a, it's a topic that's fascinated me ever since my first transformation in 2012. And it's um, regarding identities human identities and how we can protect ourselves um, and get some spiritual fortitude, really. And uh, being able to identify our different identif- identities. Boy, that's, that's a tough one, isn't it? Um, and, and kind of playing with them a little and making them a little more robust and flexible so that when shit hits the fan in our life, Um, we're usually feeling shitty because it's affected a specific identity. And when our identities feel compromised, um, yeah, we feel shitty. We feel shitty as people because part of us isn't, doesn't feel right. And we don't always know what part of us that is. So when, um, I had my first Uh, well, it probably was not my first real identity crisis, but what I came to know as my first real identity crisis, um, I vowed right then and there to create an identity that was external to the physical world. An identity that even if my human body died, I I would still have. That way nothing that happened could could be as bad as losing my my spiritual identity. so I know that what I'm talking about is real hippy dippy shit. It works off the premise that all humans have three aspects to themselves: the mind, the body, and the spirit or the soul. And what I'm talking about here is ego, mind identities. Um, so what do I mean by identities? Well, the the first one that that really kind of comes to mind is w- women they typically identify themselves um, as mothers. You know, once, once a woman has a mother, that becomes their, their primary identity, uh, which is why losing a child is probably the worst thing that could ever happen to any woman. Because when they lose that identity, they have completely lost themselves. That's just an example of what I'm talking about. I really want to suss out like a, maybe a series about identities, kind of how to identify your different identities, how to play around with the different identities. Um, Because once you create that flexibility, it can actually be quite fun to try to be something um, that's really uncomfortable, really. Um, We know as humans what we like and what we don't like. Uh, But I think we also know that there are traits that we don't inherently possess where it would be good for us to at least practice them for me. I will refer to patience. I am not a naturally patient person. 
but that is something I have come to realize that I need to practice and a skill that I need to hone in my life. So I've, I'm, I'm working on creating an identity that requires me to constantly focus on patience and how to implement it into my life. Um, I will put up a, well, I'll just refer to my blog article. I just, I just wrote the, my, my definition of patience yesterday. Um, so I'll post it along with this, or if you check out my blog at all, um, it's there. I've, I've actually done a few definitions that, that are quite, I don't know, I think they're helpful. I just, I think of things not as how, you know, oh, this, this means this. I, I think of things more intuitively. It's like, what, what do I think patience is? And then I, I wrote about it. But anyway, really, I just wanted to, to do something fucking constructive today so that I didn't feel like a piece of shit and I took a break from watching The Inbetweeners, a hilarious and witty uh, British comedy about four high schoolers, um, long enough to, to do something constructive. Uh, as, as a lot of people who have gone through breakups do, I have been trying to keep myself busy, trying to reconnect with what's important to me, and trying not to spend so much of my time thinking about a future with a person I love that will never happen. Yep, that's me getting sad. I'm human. I'm going to celebrate that. (laughs) Humans get sad. We need to learn to tell ourselves that that's okay. I've not always been so good at that. This this is my example of me being patient with myself. I'm not going to fucking tell myself that, uh, that this is wrong or bad. I've done it for far too long, and it's made me emotionally unstable. Actually, before I get into identities, let's let's talk about that a little. I was talking to my mom earlier, and uh, we were talking about getting massages, and how I was actually quite sad that I broke up with my boyfriend because um, I've done yoga. I've started doing yoga again, and I do it like every other day, and uh, I'm fucking sore, (laughs) which is great because I'm building a lot of strength. Uh, But my entire, my, my back feels like someone has beat it with a lead pipe. And, uh, you know, mm, the person I was seeing was really good at massages. And I was like, damn it. <laughs> it's totally fucked up to think about. It's not the only reason I want him back. But, yeah, it's convenient. Um, and my mom said, oh, you know me. I, I don't really like being touched. And I know my, I do know my mother. So my next question was, mom, do you think that you really don't like being touched? Or is that something that you've told yourself because you don't think you deserve to be touched or you do not, you think that that is not something that's going to happen? So as a defense mechanism to protect yourself from that sadness, you have told yourself, you have lied to yourself and said, I don't like to be touched. And she said, you're probably right. (laughs) And it just got me thinking, How many humans spend a considerable amount of time repressing the very thoughts and emotions that make us human? What is it to be human? Well, it's about being vulnerable. It's about being emotional. And the fucking facts are that humans need love and they need affection. There's, there's been heaps of studies with children who are raised in atmospheres without love and affection, and the, the trauma is calculable. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful. I, I choose to be grateful. I choose to be grateful for everything. And, yes, uh, this breakup fucking hurts, sucks. Um, but I learned a lot about myself in the last two months. And I am so fucking grateful for that because I am a better, more stable, more accepting person now than I have ever been. I'm sorry that that came at the expense of some pain for another person. I'm very sorry about that. But I reckon he learned some things about him too, himself as well. And uh, I hope... You know, I, I know him. I know he's grateful for that, too. So I'm just thankful to have gone through that with him, um, even though there was pain at the end of it. 
You have to find a purpose for the pain, people. That's a lot of peas. Alliteration, you're welcome. All right. Um, but so many humans, just we just fucking walk around denying everything that makes us human. We deny our emotions. We don't let them flow. We deny our needs. We deny human touch. I'm not talking about going out and fucking everybody you meet. That's not the same. That's not even, that's not real human touch. That's, that's a Band-Aid. You're trying to fill a space that, that isn't being filled by something more substantial. But it's, you know, in light of this, thinking back my entire life, I have done nothing but repress my own emotions and caused emotional blockage. And all it's done is create anxiety because you're literally fighting what makes you human, okay? We have emotions, we have traits that when we tell ourselves, oh, well, we recognize a need in ourselves, a need in a relationship, for example, I, I, I need substantial human contact. When someone tells me they love me, I, I automatically assume that that means that, that we're, we are going to be very communicative. It is no, it's no fucking surprise that someone who is recording a podcast who purely does it for the sake of listening to their own goddamn voice and hopefully helping some people along the way, it's no, it's no surprise that I love to communicate, that that is a huge part of a relationship for me. And I would tell myself, oh, I'm asking too much, I'm asking too much. I would deny this need for myself, and all it did was destroy my relationship. Now, granted, that's one thing. That's th that was one aspect of why the relationship didn't work. But that's okay. That is okay, and just realizing that that's okay is one of the most beautiful things that came out of this. I accept myself. I need to communicate, and if I'm not getting those needs met, it's not his fault. It's not my fucking fault. It just isn't going to work. And, and I haven't met the person I'm supposed to be with yet, but I reckon when I do, I won't notice that those needs aren't being met because it won't be a fucking problem. It won't need, need to be a conversation every day about how needs aren't being met. You know, but it's, it's really no wonder that people are depressed that people are anxious, that people are angry. Because we walk around saying, no, I shouldn't act like that. No, I shouldn't feel this way. No, I shouldn't need this or that. Just stop. Just make things easy for yourself. Don't, isn't this life hard enough without people fucking denying themselves their basic human instincts? Yeah, I talk a lot. Sometimes it gets me in trouble. Sometimes it makes people laugh. I live for the moments where it makes people laugh. I live for the moments it makes me laugh. You know, that, that approval-seeking bullshit, I'm not going to get into that. I, I fucking, I, but I, I went through that with my first transformation. Anyway, let's, let's uh, I'm just, I just wrote this down. I wanted to talk about it, of human identities and relationships. Basically what it came down to is I realized this. Breakups suck because you build a new identity and habits around a person. And when you break up, it stops. It fucking comes to a screeching halt. So think about it. What, what do I mean by you've created an identity? Well, when you start hanging out with someone new, you're going to start doing things that you didn't do before. You're going to start going over to their house. You're going to start going to specific places with them. You're going to start doing specific things with them. And as the relationship evolves and you do those things more and more and more, then you come to expect them. They become habit. Right? And they become habits that you enjoy if it's a good relationship. So, yeah. The shittiest part about breaking up is, you know, you have now created an identity within yourself that is not your whole identity and to what extent you allow this identity to kind of take up your entire being 
will reflect the amount of pain you feel if that identity is lost, meaning if you break up. So there's an aspect of Summer that was in love with a guy. She started having habits that she really liked. She got used to having sex again, uh, you know, which, which was great. And it was the best sex she'd ever had in her life. I'm not lying. I'm not fucking complimenting anybody. I'm just telling the truth. That sucks. You know, there was a lot of physical touch in that relationship, which was why I enjoyed it. And that stops, and that's painful because you're thinking, well, fuck, when am I gonna when am I gonna experience real authentic affection again? So yeah, that that sends your ass straight to crazy town thinking and worrying that that's that that's gone and you're never going to get it back or you don't know when or with who or if it'll be as good. I'm sorry. I'm being human again. Um other other things. You get used to spending an, the night at their house on a certain night and uh, all of a sudden that stops. I you know and 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 this this aspect of you it, it became as you were, as you were building the relationship it became a very important part of who you were. You start to identify that, especially when titles get involved. You start calling people girlfriend, boyfriend. You see yourself, oh, I'm I'm a girlfriend. I'm insert somebody's name, girlfriend, or I'm insert someone's name's boyfriend, and that becomes an identity, and it becomes an identity that you nurture through the relationship. Um, and then when the relationship is over, it's gone. A piece of you no longer has a purpose, and, it, it, and there was no transition period, right? You created those habits, and now those habits have completely stopped cold turkey. And I reckon that this is why people say they need quote-unquote closure. They don't need closure. What they want is a transition period to ease themselves off of the habits that they have created around that new identity, that identity that was created around that person. Because look, I'm here to tell you, you don't need closure. You don't need to have those conversations. When it's over, it's over. Do I want to talk to this person again? Absolutely. Does part of me want him to say, oh, well, I thought about it and I think we should give it another shot. Yeah. Part of, the part of me that I'm trying to heal right now and let go wants that. But there's stronger parts of me that know that unless certain aspects of each other's personality change significantly, we're just not fit to give each other what we need. And again, there's no blame there. There's absolutely no blame there. We each deserve what we need. And, and that, that's it. That's it. That's the long and short of it. So after the breakup, what I decided to do was, was heal. That identity in me needs to be nurtured, supported, and healed. I can't just kick her out. This is my form of closure. If I just say you're dead, I don't want you anymore because you think of him too much and you hurt me. Think of, how, think of the angst and anxiety that's going to create by just shutting down an aspect. Instead, I honor her. I say, you, you love to the best of your ability, and you gave, and you are, you are such a wonderful person. But I'm no longer with him, and I don't need you anymore. So I have to let you go. And in that way, you, you let go of that aspect of your identity. You're also letting go of the person who you were with. With respect and love and kindness, people, please, can we, be, can we please be kind to one another? Instead of just saying, oh, that fucking asshole, he broke up with me, that dick. What, a sh what an asshole. He'd rather, he'll probably go off and fuck someone else. You know what I mean? All that nasty, negative bullshit that comes with breaking up. I don't have time for it. I don't have the energy for it. I want positive energy. I want to put out positive energy in this universe, not negative. 
So I'm dealing with the negative energy as it, as it comes up. I have a strong system of friends. I'm very, very fucking lucky. The last time this happened to me, I, I literally <laughs> retreated for three years and was incapacitated. Because when that happened, I did not have the knowledge I have now about myself, the self-love or acceptance. I had no friends because throughout the, the term of our relationship, I had, I had gotten rid of all my friends. I had no su- support structure when that relationship ended. I don't want to talk about it. It was dark days. Dark days. And I'm hurting now. But I have the tools and the attitude to learn and to grow from the experience. The most beautiful thing that I heard was at the end of my yoga classes, and I'm, I'm so fucking, those yoga classes started, <laughs> my first one was the day after um, I, uh, I got dumped. And, you know, a lot of chicks would have been like, I don't feel like going to yoga today. But I knew, I was like, oh, this is me. This is me healing. This is me balancing my strength of my body and my mind and my soul. I'm going to do this. And it's going to, it's really, it's going to do a lot, a lot for me. And uh, at the end, we close every yoga practice by, by saying that we are light and we are love, which I already knew. But then almost like my fucking soul was being talked to straight up, my teacher said, and we are here for the purpose, and my eyes perked up because I've always wanted to know my purpose, to have this human experience and I thought Jesus that's a great way to think about it isn't it we are here we are here to have a human experience how's yours going mine's fucking sucked at times <laughs> but I've always learned and that is the point point. and the best thing that I have learned I'm gonna get a little fucking self-confident here because everybody should here's what I've learned I'm confident, I'm smart, I'm pretty, I'm honest, brutally honest. I'm a good person. I love everybody. But yeah, I'm a little fucked. (laughs) Sometimes my brain chemicals go off the rails and I lose everything that that I knew. I have a disorder that sometimes I, I lose my shit in a very real way. And uh, I'm a very emotional person. But the only hope I have of healing that is by acknowledging those emotions and acknowledging that I'm an emotional person. Because my entire life up until now, I have denied those emotions and struggled against them and analyzed them and said, where are you coming from? What are you doing here? Why do I feel this way? Instead of just saying, hey, all right. You know, like right now. There'll be periods where I'm, I'm talking, I'm laughing with my friends. And then something will happen. And I'll, and I'll take a turn to, to sad town. And my, uh, you know, my motto for a long time, well, not for a long time, ever since I moved to New Zealand, I don't know, I picked this up, is that I accept my feelings and I expect them to change. I expect I accept my feelings and I expect them to change because they will. So, in all of this, um, I have decided to 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 really focus on a new identity that I am calling the emotional experiencer. And uh, yeah, I don't know what that's going to look like. I'm just going to work on accepting my emotions and kind of playing around in that space because it's. Jesus, because I'm, I'm sick of fighting myself. Because <laughs> when I fight myself, all it does is make me fight against other people. And I don't want to fight. Fighting's fucking exhausting. And yeah, I, I have a lot of other identities. And uh, sometimes I let, I let certain ones take over. And I, I slip the rails. I become unbalanced. My addict especially. <sighs> My addict loves to take control. 
She's an extremist. Boy, she is off right in one fucking ditch or the next. She loves to see things as black and white. And when I give in to that, because I'm uncomfortable in other aspects of my life and I'm comfortable with the emotions that I'm feeling, uh, boy, she, she can really cause some damage. <laughs> and um, in this instance, I think that happened. I, I did. I, I lost sight of myself when I start. I only, look, I only have one example of being in a relationship, and that didn't go so fucking good. Um, and that relationship and this relationship, I treated them the same, and they're not. But that's because I was just being human. I was just going off the examples I've had in my life. I, di I didn't try to be new. I didn't try to act instead of react. I reacted. I could have just acted and said, Summer, pfft. This is not fucking rocket science. Be your confident, funny, happy self. Instead, I reverted uh, back to the person I thought I was in relationships, um, which was not a healthy person. The confusion between those identities led me to slip the rails, and I lost my identity completely. I did not feel myself. And during that time, um, I caused damage that could not be undone. Granted, I'm not willing to take complete um, responsibility for the for the breakup. Um, seriously, it comes down to I I have needs and and he has needs, and they just did not align. Whether or not that can be worked on and reconciled. Uh, I don't know. I'm 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 on this path now. I've got some things that I need to work on. It's going to take time. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen in the future. People can call me, you know, whatever they want to call me. I am spiritual, and I believe that everything happens for a reason. And if God wants, I'm I'm just saying, God, fucking call it your higher power, call it energy, wh whatever. I don't give a fuck what you call it. Whatever you can relate to, something, a driving force of the universe. I like to think of it as just pure energy. But the energy will bring us together. It'll bring us back together. Or the energy will take me to someone new. To learn a different lesson. Sometime I'll talk about sacred contracts and, uh, and I'll get into how, how we actually already chose our relationships. We chose our parents. We chose our relationships. We chose everybody that we'll meet in this life, and we chose every lesson. We chose the lessons that we need to learn in this life, and guess what? You are doomed. <laughs> we are all doomed to repeat shitty scenarios until we learn, until it finally sinks in, until we finally learn the lesson. I think that this lesson for me was really sussing out patience and, and how I can start to build some patience in my life. And unfortunately for me, it means um, letting or acknowledging that, uh, that I have no control over, over anything external to myself. And that's hard for me because I'm a fucking control freak. That is definitely, that's my, that's my addict identity. Um, she is obsessed with control. So... I have to make conscious decisions every second of every day not to let that aspect of my personality dominate uh, my actions. I know this is deep shit. Just give a think to what I've said and what it means for you in your life. Um, I hope that you can learn by my examples. But if I can say anything and have it fucking sink in, it's Je Jesus Christ. If you can't love yourself, at least accept yourself. Because I've said it before and I'll say it again. You're the only person that's guaranteed not to leave you. Relationships in this life are transitory and they're transient in nature. Because this life, by nature, is transient. We're here to experience. We're here to be human. So stop fighting yourself and just celebrate the fact that you're human. One of my favorite things to do is just look at something totally crazy that I did and fucking have a good laugh at it. It's like, Jesus Christ, I really, <laughs> I really said that?
Boy, hindsight's 2020, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, I feel good about what just happened. I, I did something constructive today. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I just I just appreciate this opportunity. Fucking if two people listen to this and get something out of it, I, I I will be or fuck it. If I listen to this a month from now, when I've slipped the rails again, I'll be fucking thankful. So uh, yeah, leave comments if if you like this kind of shit. I'll, I'll keep talking. About, I'll fucking keep talking about it anyway identities, um, I'll try to put together a thing about, um, how, how I've worked out my identities, um, and it goes along with the sacred contract shit, but learning to play around with your identities, um, and not putting all of yourself into any one identity is really powerful tool, because there are certain aspects of yourself that are going to come and go, you're going to get, you know, there are times where you're going to go to school, you're going to have a certain job, you're going to get fired from that job, you're going to leave that job, or you're going to have a kid, or you're going to get married. You're, these identities, these these changes in our lives are, are an opportunity for us to work on different identities. So when you get divorced, you know that that identity is gone. You know, learning how to deal with these different identities and watch them come and go Uh with minimal pain and impact to the the larger being is really fucking important. So, okay, I'm going to stop Jabber John. Get off my soapbox here. Hope this was helpful. Uh, If it wasn't, well, thanks for listening anyway. (laughs) Lighters.